In this video, I'm going to do a real-time walkthrough of my oil painting process. I'm going to do this with uh, and just talk through it as I record the video. It's something that I've not done with paints before. I've done it with a pencil drawing once in the past, but that was quite a long time ago. The painting I'm going to work on is this one. It's one that in the moment as I was recording the video I had some symmetry issues uh, and just sort of some time constraint issues as well. Um, I was trying to fit this into an hour but I went significantly over which happens but hopefully this is of some use to someone so let's go to the video. I'm gonna walk through my painting process in real time here is the palette that I'm using. I'll try to put the colors in the description. I'm going to start with a very thin outline. I've got a number of, we've got some umber and some sienna and some various colors mixed together with some linseed oil to make it really thin here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's thinned down quite a bit. And I'm going to start with kind of a rough outline here. Do something like this. I'm going to do kind of a simple portrait here, hopefully. See how this goes. I would really like to keep this demonstration around an hour if I can. I don't know if that'll be possible or not, but we'll see. As I mentioned, I've never done this before with painting, so we'll see. Usually the videos that I share are kind of edited and sped up significantly to make them easier to consume. So this one will obviously be longer, but we'll see if I can make this work. So again, I'm starting here with a very thin mix of colors. And I'm just trying to shape out kind of roughly what the head looks like, where the features should be. One of the things that I've been practicing pretty extensively over the past year is trying to get better at freehand painting, um, trying to do it without measurement and without... Um, I, I actually started enjoying using a, proportional divider, a caliper type tool to help me with proportions, um, which works really well actually. I'd, I'd recommend it over a ruler for sure. But I realized as I was learning painting that learning to paint with oils that I wanted to eventually paint from life so I thought well, I'd might as well get used to freehand painting too. You know, learn them both at once. See if I can see if I can improve there. And over the course of about 120 paintings, I was able to get some tangible um, kind of work out those muscles a little bit see some tangible results. I'm still, I think I still have a long way to go in terms of fidelity to the subject and actually getting a, a portrait that looks exactly like the person. I think that's a an amazing skill that some people have. I don't, I don't quite have it yet, but you know, I'm working on it. It's all about trying to get better trying to improve. So I've almost got a year of painting under my belt, which 120 paintings in a year, that feels like a lot to me. I don't know if it's actually a lot. Um, certainly for a hobbyist like myself, it feels like a lot. But I'm hopeful that I keep at it and then another year and another 
hundred some odd paintings later. I, I can't wait to see where I'm at, how my style has changed, and if I've gotten even more comfortable with this type of thing. So as I'm kind of roughing out these shapes and areas, I think I got the the head roughly close. Maybe a little too short, but that's okay. I can kind of nudge this paint where I want it. That's one of the great things about painting. Uh, I don't I don't have actually any experience with anything other than oil paints. So maybe it's true for other types, but I know it's true for oil paint. It's very forgiving. So if you place something in the wrong place or in the wrong area proportionally or something you've done isn't working, you can always can always adjust. The paint will allow you to push it around. You can wipe something clean. There have certainly been times where I've I've painted something and realized that I couldn't fix it. I just needed to start that section over or start that piece over and um, paint will allow you to do that. You can just take your paper towel and just whoosh, wipe it clean. So this is just your basic head and shoulders portrait. Actually I got that angle wrong. Something like that maybe. Just your basic head and shoulders portrait. I don't always take the exact same approach with everything. Sometimes I'll kind of rough things out in a different, uh, slightly different order, but here at least I kind of followed my usual head and shoulders approach, just shaping out the face, then trying to use lines to figure out planes, like if this was a figure study, I would I would do where the shoulders are horizontally like that, and I would do a line of symmetry for the body. Um, and if I was including like the lower trunk, I would try to do the a line for the hips as well, kind of what that angle looks like. Um, almost shaping it out like a like one of those posable model things. So I've got the shape. And I'm going to, like I said, I want to keep this under an hour if I can, so maybe I shouldn't get this in depth down there. Maybe just stick to the head, but I'm not sure if doing this in an hour is a pipe dream or not. I think usually my, my paintings are right around an hour and a half to two hours, so... I might be a little over ambitious with that. We'll see. So hopefully I did not make this paint too thin. It's pretty runny. The thinness will help as we're adding additional layers of paint. At least I think. <laughs> so I'm just kind of, we've got the basic shapes in. I'm just kind of adding some areas that are going to have some darker values. This step may actually not be totally necessary because we do want we don't want uniform types of colors existing here. We want to we want to tailor little blocks and zones in here of, of specific colors, but this can help to some extent. So that's pretty good. 
let's get a little extra hair going here so we'll we'll work on the hair at the end um, I don't usually do the background and hair until the second half of the of the portrait um, backgrounds are interesting we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later I think but I've always found the different approaches that you can take to that very, very fascinating. So that's pretty good for basics. So I'm done with this brush now. This with the thin paint. Um, the other brushes that I'm gonna I'm gonna use two each of the same size, and then two of these smaller ones. I'm gonna start with the bigger ones though, and I'm gonna basically just do. Uh, dark colors on one and light colors on the other. And I'm going to try to start very... Uh, I'm going to try to start with this broad and stick with it as, as long as I can, this, this bigger brush. Um, it looks like I didn't clean that brush very well. It's got some, some gray on it, so let me get this thing clean. I want to, so I'm mixing a little um, titanium white with some cadmium red and some yellow ochre. I want to find a nice kind of little rosy kind of color here. Sometimes I try to get a, a middle value to start something that looks like it exists between but I don't know this time I just felt like uh, kind of getting something a little a little pinker to start and I'm just kind of going in and dropping some color where I think this color makes sense where this color might exist there's not a whole lot of spaces with this color, but if I've gone too bright, I can I can fix that in a little bit. So that's that's probably good there. So now I'm gonna looking at this, I see some some nice areas that are a little a little lighter. I'm going to add a little more ochre, a little more yellow ochre here. See if I can, that's a little better. Interesting thing about faces is I'm getting some good practice, but I don't always know how to, how to describe what I'm doing kind of it intentionally like I feel like some people who are experts at this can say all right now I'm going to do this in this pattern and this is going to simulate this and this is how I want the light to look and kind of becoming good at describing what they're doing I'm not even close to there I'm hoping that this exercise talking through this painting might actually help me a little bit with that to get better at describing what I'm doing but maybe it won't so I'm just now I'm kind of drifting between color values of some of the t of the two that I've used so far so the one with a little extra ochre and the one that's kind of pink I'm trying to bring it up a little lighter both of those and just sort of bouncing between and I'm not cleaning my brush off at all between those things because I want I want to be um, I want that kind of dynamic shift between the colors to happen now that's something that I don't think that that an expert would really do um, I, I think maybe that's something I'll grow out of as I learn more to paint. Um, 
or maybe that's because I'm kind of lazy and I try to do things really fast and um, try to like maximize my time when I do this um, but I just kind of like not cleaning the brush and just letting colors fall onto the surface that honestly sometimes are a little surprising like I didn't know that was gonna happen just then that little dark piece I'll probably have to fix that and I don't I don't think that an expert would have made that mistake but such is life so touch this up a little more get a little lighter shifting back to the ochre a little bit I want to get I've got some lighter areas here that are gonna need they're actually eventually probably gonna need some actual white with with not much else mixed with it Bad. Okay. And here in a minute, let's get rid of that dark piece right there. In a minute, I think I'm going to shift to the other. Let's see, this is a number eight Utrich synthetic brush, by the way. I guess I could have mentioned that earlier. Um, I'm going to switch to the other one that's this size in a second and try to get some um, some darker values. That's a weird shape. I might have to play around with the face shape a little bit because I don't think I, I don't think I got the right curves going, and that that happens sometimes. Although that's not bad. That's not bad. Could be worse. So we'll go there. All right. So now I'm going to shift to the same size brush. <clears throat> I'm just cleaning it off a little bit and when I clean these I have some water down here that I use a little bit and some vegetable oil actually which kind of helps but usually the big thing that I do is I just have a lot of paper towels bought a bunch at Costco and I just do this and try to get the paint off oil is tough to get off so you just kind of do the best you can so to shift the values I usually use some umber or some sienna with that ochre cadmium red combo or there's some um, let's see who is it it's gambling sells a uh, like a pre-mix of ochre and cad red and titanium white that is called blush so if you want to save some time on your mixing you can have a little blush on your palette and that, that can help a little bit um, I don't know. I think, again, that's advice that probably an experienced painter might tell you not to do. They might tell you it's better to learn how to mix your colors from the, um, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert, but I think they call it a Zorn palette, which is the, is the ochre, the cadmium red, the, maybe a black, and a and a titanium white, just a very basic palette. I think that's good practice. I've, I've at least heard that that's good practice to, to try doing that for portraits. Um, Cause you can get to most of your portrait colors from that, from just working those. But, you know, if you're trying to save time, sometimes it helps to use different mixes to your advantage. Okay, so what I'm doing right now, I'm trying to find the right the right hues that I want here. And I don't I don't use blacks because I don't like I don't like the way black mixes with other colors. I I tend to end up with muddy paintings when I use it. And, I, and early on, I've, I found that I didn't like that. Uh, some, some other 
more experienced artist gave me the advice that, well, you don't have to use black. You can mix your own dark colors by using ultramarine blue and uh, raw umber or other types of browns mixed with other um, with blues. And it gives you some really pretty dark colors that are that are varied um, rather than just like a, a black. So I have found that I really, really like that advice. Um, at least for Alla Prima, uh, wet on wet painting like this, where you know that even if you're not trying to, a lot of your colors are going to get mixed together. Um, well, at least if you're at my skill level where you're not advanced. Um, you know, there's going to be some blending that happens, and I don't know. I just think it's kind of nice to, to make your own dark. But I'm trying to get some of that dark here onto the onto the palette, and I'm bouncing a little bit between sienna and and umber because I'm actually just kind of experimenting on the fly because I'm not sure which one I like better. One of them is giving me a little more blue. One of them is giving me a little more of a, like an interesting brown. So I don't know. I'm actually not sure which one I like better here. But this is another this is another um, amateur painter thing, probably, where being able to predict what your colors do, being able to predict what colors look like, is harder when you have less experience, like like me. Um, because I just don't always know. Like sometimes I'll mix something up. And it'll once I get it to my to my painting surface, I will be surprised at what it looks like. That happens sometimes. So just trying to get these shadows in here. That um, that thin paint that I used to start with was actually kind of lighter than I than I normally would use or or at least expected here. So I need some I need some more browns in here. I need some darker ones. One of the things that painting has really helped me with over the last year is when I when I more so did uh, color pencil, I was pretty timid about um, contrast. Like I, f I feel like a lot of my drawings were pretty washed out because I didn't really explore bright colors or, or bold looking colors. But paint has really, even though a lot of my paintings end up kind of gray or kind of brownish, at least the colors end up pretty vibrant usually. And that's that's nice. That's that's nice that painting has brought that out. Cuz I think that you know, I don't always think about what's interesting to look at, but maybe I should. I think that the the brighter colors are more interesting visually for art enjoyers. And although I do paint f mostly for myself because it's a hobby and it's fun, you know, if I ever want to try to sell paintings or try to get into that world, um, you need to be able to make things that are interesting to other people too. So. I think that I'm getting close to the limits of what I can do with this bigger brush now. 
I may need to shift. This is something that I'm not always sure that I'm ready for, for that shift. I'm going to jump back to this uh, light brush for a second. I see some opportunities here. Um, so yeah, this trying to use a big brush for as long as possible is something that I've seen and heard elsewhere from from more experienced artists. A, a lot of the things that I do, I'm trying to mimic other people, I'm trying to learn from people who have a lot of paintings under their belt. We're, we're fortunate, I think, or I'm fortunate anyways, I guess we're all fortunate to, to live in a time where there's so much information that's available, and a lot of it's available for free. So, like on, just on YouTube, for example, there are so many artists on YouTube that essentially give advice for free. They paint, they, they talk about their painting, they talk about technique, they even answer questions. And that is an incredible resource. I can't believe that that's the time we live in where we can have access to all that. I think that in terms of being an amateur painter, it's got to be one of the best times to, to be alive and, and want to learn to paint without going to school for it. Okay, so. Uh, so that was kind of a long diatribe about that, but where, where I was trying to get, though, was that a lot of the stuff that I do, I do because I heard somewhere that this was a way to do it. So like, I see a video from a painter who can do incredible things and they say, well, use the big brush for as long as possible. It, it helps you. And then start broad and work your way to details as you progress. And then I try to do that and it looks better than what I did before. And I say, oh, okay. Well, that was great advice. I think I'm going to keep doing it. <clears throat> and that's how, over the past year, how I've built certain habits up, is just taking advice and trying to put it into my workflow. So... So that's where a lot of these habits come from, and a lot of the things that I'm actually talking about here. So like, when I keep talking about zones of color and blocking things in, those are probably terms that I heard elsewhere. So now what I'm doing is I'm just trying to I'm trying to get rid of as much of the as much of this extra space, the unpainted space as I can. And I'm undecided if I even need to go down here just due to time constraints. I would like to. It would be a nicer finished painting if I did, but I'm at 30 minutes already, so I don't know if this if that's actually going to work. We'll see. All right. So, as I said, I'm probably going to need to switch brushes here, but I see a couple little areas I can drop some color on. We'll drop that there.
This is mostly just titanium white with the slightest bit of ochre in it. And I'm just trying to find these little little areas that make sense to do this. I'm trying to create a little bit of a little bit of 3D structure from the light. I think I did that wrong there, but that's okay. I find myself saying that a lot when I'm painting. Oh, that's okay. I messed that up, but that's all right. And maybe that all comes from the fact that I am just, for the most part, doing this for myself. I occasionally do something for friends or family, but, you know, there's no pressure here when you're doing it for fun. You're just kind of putting paint on, on paper or, or paint on canvas and seeing what it does. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to this smaller brush, a number four brush, and I have two of them. One's going to be my dark brush, one's going to be my light brush again. I have some of the stuff I've been playing around with on the palette still down here. I'm kind of playing around with some of those color mixes. Let's see what that does. It's pretty dark. I don't know if it's too dark or not. I have a really bad memory. I wish I could credit some of the artists that I've learned from, but I don't remember. Probably butcher their names if I try to say them. But um, I know there that there's one guy on Instagram that posted a really cool graphic that was the most important highlight areas of the face and they were kind of areas of typically of deep shadows and he was saying that it was really important to try to get those deep shadows in place and oops I think I did that wrong Oh well. Um, so the, I think the deep shadow areas were the eye, like the top of the eye here, this little curve, which I'll work on, this curve here, under the nose, the top of the lip, and under the chin. And he was saying that it's, it's really important to get those, to get those areas, get the shape of them right, and get them dark enough so that the viewer can can get a, a sense even if like close up it's not perfect they can get a sense when they're viewing the piece that this is the shape of the subject's face it looks kind of like this so close up it may not be perfect but but it just sort of works when you look back at it. Um, it's a great graphic though. I wish I could remember the guy's name. I can't. I can't for the life of me. Um, but anyway, so let's let's keep working on these. Again, I've got this this smaller brush now. And I'm still trying to block in. I don't know that so I try to get the, the eyes last just because I find it helps like pupil placement is really hard and getting the shape of the eyes right is kind of hard for me too so I find that it's nice to save that for last when you've got the rest of the, the face shaped out then you can work on that bring that together or the eyes just kind of jump out in the right place sometimes it's kind of cool let's see if i can recover some of this because i i did get a little too dark 
It's still pretty dark. I hope my head is not getting into frame. I'm not sure if it is or not. My nose might be. That's another tricky thing about, or it's a tricky thing about trying to film paintings, is getting the right angle to where you can capture the painting without getting your face in the way. That is not easy. Sometimes I fall down a rabbit hole of color mixing that is just not right and I can't I have to start a whole fresh little area on my palette because I've I've muddied something up or gone in a gone in a direction that I can't figure out what that direction is exactly and that that happens sometimes um, I think that if I had a better a better grasp of like color theory and some of the the hows and whys of color I might not fall into those traps so easily but so one thing I did forget to mention I I have a so yellow ochre is the main one that I use uh, the main yellow that I use for these but I have like a really nice bright, I think it's called Hansa yellow, that sometimes I get into mixing that in just to add a little extra vibrancy to it. I don't always use it, but I don't know, sometimes it looks kind of nice. I'm not using it currently on this one, but we'll see. We'll see where the next couple minutes take me. Maybe I'll go down that road. At this point in a painting, usually what I start doing, the pace slows down a little bit for me. I don't know this, if this is true for everybody, but the pace slows down and I try to start looking at pieces that look unfinished. Um, and this is where Maybe my eye as a painter is, n oops, is not as good. Because um, I know that I still often miss big sections or big features or, or things that need to be corrected. I just kind of miss them somehow, gloss over them. Um, that is... That has long been a problem for me, probably a byproduct of trying to work too fast, as I've said, but I'm trying to get better at it. It's another another thing to improve on. So I'm just, ooh, sorry about that squeaking. So that squeaking is my, my beautiful paint, um, my easel. This is actually my kid's easel which I have chopped up an Amazon box. And I, I did that when I first started painting um, a year ago, and I just haven't found a need to use anything else. I, I, I guess I could buy a better easel, but the box, the, the broken down, taped up Amazon box has served me pretty well, so I'm just gonna keep rolling with it. But it does squeak, and that, that would be a downside. So you can hear it. Squeak, squeak. All right, so now I, I'm getting close to where I need to probably put some detail into these eyes, which is always uh, quite a moment. Because will I get it right? Especially in a, a short session like this where I'm trying to condense it into a certain amount of time, I kind of feel like I have one shot at it. So 
so that's shaping up decently. All right, so I am going to get back to this lighter brush for a second. I need to fix this. This is kind of weird looking. So, you know, this, this little line here where the nose is reminds me of something. So a long time ago, um, when I was just doing pencil drawings, um, one criticism that I received once was that I was focusing too much on lines and that lines don't actually exist, that lines are something our brains create that are not real to make sense of something we see. And honestly, I didn't really understand that feedback. I just kind of said, oh, okay, well, cool. But it kind of makes sense now a little bit. Like when I, when I look at something like this, if I have a really discrete line that is narrow, it tends to not always work or it tends to jump out and, and become something that I want to get in there and fix. Um, you know, right, right, wrong or indifferent. I saw that line there and it didn't look right to me. I felt like I needed to, to go back in there and fix it. Um, so I tried not to see these as lines necessarily, like when I was doing the the initial outline. It's not really, I didn't think of them as lines. That was Those were just guide rails for me to place the, the, the blocks of color into, um, kind of like paint by number a little bit. And then because the paint is so thin, the idea is that stuff, those guide rails go away. Uh, I want the lines to go away and just have the blocks of color exist. And that's how the, the painting is built. At least that's what my intention is. Whether it gets there exactly or not, who knows. Okay, so maybe I need to look at the eyes now. So I'm going to come back in here with umber and try to do like a little... I still got this wet paint here. So I'm just going to try to put where the eye should be, somewhere like that. Is this person looking directly ahead? I think so. Are those centered? I think they are. So that's roughly where we need to be. Let's get a little darkness going here too, on top. This is umber, raw umber. And it's just sort of playing around with the pre-existing um, pre colors. It's that nice Alaprima stuff going on. Okay, so that's not too bad, I guess. That could be worse. I don't know if it 100% works, but we'll go with it for this. Uh, so the next thing that I want to do I am now going to move to my smallest brush, which is a cheap one that I bought. It's a liner brush. I don't even know what the brand is. I bought it on Amazon. It's very small. It's the smallest one. So I'm trying to save this towards the end like this, I am now going to actually mix up a black. Uh, instead of trying to find some dark skin tone or some variant with, with brown, I want to take this umber and mix it directly with ultramarine blue and try to find a black. And I'm probably going to put the black in three places. Alright, that looks kind of black. So, I want to put the black if I can do this without messing up, I want to put it here. Okay, and then I want to put it here. And 
I'm going to have to add more to that to make it look right. But And I want to put some right here. Where else is going to be dark? And then I also want to put some right here. And I am not super confident about the sh eye shape here, but I'm also going to try not to dwell on it too much because I do you want to get to the hair in the background on this painting for the purposes of this recording and I think if I beat myself over the head about the eyes forever I won't get there so we've got that there and now what we want to do we need to fill in the rest of the eye, but one of the things that, again, is a piece of advice that I got from other more experienced folks is eyes are not white. They are different colors. They're um, often gray or they can be, they can have some kind of reddish and pinkish and all kinds of other colors too. So. I hope I'm not too far away from the mic. I hope you can still hear me. I was leaning over to to my palette to mix some, some more black, and then I'm just going to drop some titanium white in. Not too much. I want a dark gray first. <clears throat> so I'm going to take this dark gray, and I'm going to find the darker parts of the of the eye of the quote whites of the eye but the darker parts and I'm gonna just kind of go in here and drop this dark gray like this my hope so I love eyes that look alive in paintings that look very um, I don't know if realistic is the right word because this is a very kind of impressionist uh, approach to light and color, but eyes that look lively are, are nice, I find. I, I just like seeing them in paintings. So it's something that I can't always do, but sometimes they'll just sort of jump out of a painting that I'm working on and I'll, I'll be surprised to see them and happy to see them because um, I can't like I said I can't always make that happen but so here I just am still pushing that lighter gray it's still there and now let's get a lot of white and this is still gray it's still umber and ultramarine blue and titanium white but it's the lightest gray that I'm gonna have here and we'll put it here and is that it that might be it we'll make it kind of circular trace it like that and where else I think here Okay, that's not bad. All right, so I do need to clean this off. I don't want the gray anymore. I think we're done with gray. I do want to go back in and get the some more black into the eye, though. I want to get the pupil. So we'll go back to our black that was already mixed. And I'm gonna hit the center. We will add some shine to the eye at the end, if I can remember. That adds some nice liveliness to it as well. But I want to touch the middle and I want to get the kind of the 
the rim of the eye too, or the, the I guess this would be the iris. Because I, I want to add some color to it, but the color to eyes can be really subtle. It's not always like a bright, vibrant thing that leaps off, leaps off the page. Sometimes it's very understated. So I'm gonna, this is actually a clean dry brush that I'm coming back and kind of, I think I messed that up actually, oops. Oh well, I'm not going to dwell on that. Uh, okay, so let's go. I'm going to get a little, a little blue and a little titanium white. Is that all I want? Yeah, that's probably all I want. Let me see what happens when I'm actually not sure what this is going to look like. I just want to hit a little blue here. The idea is a little blue, it's ultramarine blue and titanium white, and I'm just kind of hitting the bottom part of the iris. I want it to interact a bit with the gray that's there and interact a little with the black and see what it does. It's not bad. It could be worse. So then I also want to... I have another liner brush. You know, as I mentioned, I like to have a dark and a light for each type of brush. I have another liner brush. I'm just going to hit it with a little white on here. Try to get it as narrow as possible. I'm just sort of dragging the brush against the palette a bit. I think we've got some some shine here. Maybe some here. Is that too much? Maybe. Maybe a little. And I feel like there's a little extra white right there. Okay, that's actually not bad. I said I wouldn't labor over this too much, the eye part, but I am going to actually go in and do a little shaping just a bit. And I'm going to hit it with a little bit more black. Partially because I messed up the black in the nose and I want to go back to that as well. So I'm going to go here. Okay, that's better. I like that. Oh, geez. Oops. That was weird. Split the bristles on this brush. My subject looks maybe a little cross-eyed for some reason. I think I kind of... Uh, look at me laboring the eyes like I said I wouldn't. Okay, so... We have not really done anything on the lips either. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it because I do need to move on. We're almost to an hour, so I did say that I would 
get to the hair and background as well. So I'm just gonna kind of at least add some 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 reds to this. Um, not a whole lot. I'm not gonna. Obviously, as you can tell, I'm not a hyper detail type of dude. I don't know that I have the the skill for it. I I like this, as I mentioned, impressionist style that a lot of. I think it's somewhat popular in portrait painting, like um, kind of the John Singer Sargent type. Uh, ins inspiration at least again not that not that level of talent or anything like that but just a style to emulate but hyper realism is is certainly not what those types of guys did or guys and ladies did um, I think that takes a level of, you know, as I mentioned, talent, of course, but sheer patience to 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 work paintings to that point. It's it's incredible. Um, I'm just not sure that I have the the steadiness of I don't know what you would what would you would even say steadiness of like character and patience and just I guess that would be perseverance um, to carry through with some of those just incredible highly detailed like I see I see pieces on Instagram sometimes that are like they look like photographs and that is a just another level I don't know I don't know that I would be able to to keep myself sane through a portrait like that I think that I would just I don't know because like one thing goes wrong with it you have to I don't know do you have to start over or repaint it or I feel like there's a lot of demand for steadiness there. Okay, so there's some some rudimentary kind of reddish for our lips. Um, you know, not, not going crazy because we do need to move on here, but let me clean that up. Clean that up a little bit. Alright, so the face is decent enough. We can roll with it for now. Let's go to the hair. So I am now going to take my dirty brush that I was using for the skin. I'm going to try to get some of the some of the paint off, but honestly, I don't really care if all the paint is off. Um, and I'm just going straight into the raw umber because I want to I want to make use of this thin paint that's here, and I'm just going to start touching the highlights. Start trying to capture the dark parts of the hair. This is, to me, the hair is the ultimate challenge in some ways because coming from using pencil, my instinct has long been, as I talked about before, lines. I want lines. I want to draw lines. And hair is just a bunch of lines. And it seems that way to me. Um, so I want to make it lines in painting as well. But I find that trying to do that does not make a painting that I like. So I have to figure out, well, how can I, how can I simulate sort of lines with, without drawing lines? So that's, that's a, that's been a tricky thing for me. Um, I think the answer is still doing zones of color, finding where dark spots are and light spots are and all that stuff. Still doing that, but trying to use your your brush technique to make it look like a different 
texture than the face. That's a work in progress, something for me to, to practice. So I'm just kind of hitting the dark spots here. And then you might think I'm going for the light spots next, but actually I'm not. I'm, I'm then going to, then I'm going to hit the uh, background because um, let me get some, I'm just going to rough out some stuff here. I, I want some, some structure Let's see. like that. Maybe I don't know, something like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my biggest brush, which is this one. I'm going to clean it off. So I'm going to do my favorite background. So this is another Utrich brush. It's a 12. It's my biggest one that I use. I really only use it for backgrounds for the most part, sometimes for clothing if I have a lot that I need to cover. But so here I'm going to I'm gonna do a nice gray background because gray is my favorite color. So I'm gonna get this get this umber going. And I've actually almost used all my umber for this for this uh, painting that I put on the palette, so So I am getting this almost to black because I want to kind of, I don't know, and I'll probably do, I'll do the dark part over here. So, oh, that's really blue. <laughs> that's bluer than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to add some more umber. Okay. All right. So this is going to be a bluish background then. I changed my mind apparently, or at least the paint changed my mind for me. So. I'm just doing this. So what's going to end up happening? I'm going to get the the background in here. Oops. Kind of like this. And I really oops. Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. That's where the hair was going to be. So that's one of the weaknesses of the way that I do this is I don't plan very well and I just kind of put things in and sometimes I don't do it right. But I'm just roughing this out around the head and I like to add a little gradient to it, add some titanium white, get the gray going. That's kind of fun. So now we're going to be gray. and just sort of let them mix together like this. That's kind of cool. That's a nice look. I don't know. Maybe I'm a one trick pony because I do this a lot, but with the backgrounds, I mean, but it's kind of fun. I like when they mix together like that. And I don't always even carry it all the way to the edge. I, I just kind of mix it like this. And I'm going to add even more white. I'm going to make it even lighter as I get to the top. Just because I want to. And I think that's, I'm kind of rocking my painting, the tape off now. I hope I didn't uncenter it for the video, but now I've got this nice little, nice little gradient happening and I just accidentally touched gray to the head, to the hair, which is fine. It's not that big of a deal. As I mentioned, it's oil paint. It's flexible. It'll work with us. So I'm just going to top this off here. I don't know. Let's do it like that. So that that's pretty good. I kind of like that. So then I'm going to come in. And you know what? I just decided I want a little more here. So we'll do that. So now, now I'm going to go back to the hair. 
because I want to f touch up the outer edges and I want to add that extra color. So I do need to get back into this umber and see where there's more darkness. So there's some right there. Where does the darkness touch the background? There's some there. And I'm being aided this entire time by the thin paint that was my base layer. That's still helping me mix this, which is nice. All right, so this is gonna kind of blend up there, but that's actually gonna be white that's gonna blend. So let me get that. I hope I don't have to pause to get more raw umber, that'd be a shame. So far I've managed to do this all without pausing, which is quite a trick that I didn't think I'd be able to pull off. This is almost like a live painting session. So that's a nice dark. So there's some more dark here. I didn't really get where the jaw meets the hair here. I think there'll be some some fall over of the hair. So all right. So now now we need to get in and start adding some light colors. Blonde hair is really hard for me because I still can never remember what these pros say to do about blonde hair. I know it's some mix of yellow and red and brown, maybe? Brown? Or is it blue? See, I always forget. That's the problem. I don't know. The pros know. The pros can remember. I always forget, though. I guess that looks kind of blonde. So I don't want to destroy all of my all of my darks. I don't think that's light enough. Okay, we'll try this. Well, that's not bad. I think maybe it was supposed to have some blue in it, the blonde color. But I don't really know. I think that there is it would probably be a good idea for me someday to take some some classes like some intro to paint classes or something because I just feel like there's a lot of stuff that I stumble across as I'm painting that I think they probably cover in the intro class and I'm like wow amazing but everyone already knows So I'm just kind of trying to bring this hair into being to some extent. I am not really capturing though how bright it probably should be. And it if I messed this up. I was trying to leave a block here free because there should be hair there. And I did not succeed at that. So that is a little unfortunate because that's gonna be that's gonna be hard to recover. I could actually probably just wipe it clean, but I am not gonna do that. big pieces of color. Where are they? This is kind of what I mean, I think, when I was talking about um, the equivalent of like blocking in the zones of color in the skin. This is kind of like that. We're trying to find the big pieces of color in the hair. Like where does where does something bright jump out? 
and the difficult part of that is each time you lay it down you have to keep in mind that you might be dragging some some blue with you and that might be okay if that's what you're trying to do but it also might not be okay maybe maybe you don't want that so let's see maybe something like this let's kind of mix this up a little bit let's see what happens okay it's turning blue All right, so there's always the capability to recover. Like I I got too much blue in here. You can always recover. It's just a matter of how much how much time can you and do you want to spend trying to fix it. So if you're not trying to do a video for a specific purpose and you have unlimited time, just take your time. Fill in, all, fill in the colors how you want to. It'll be fine. You can take a break, come back to it. I kind of messed up some of this. I need this part to be darker. I wonder if I need some blue. I think I need to mix a little blue with, with the umber here. Get that going. Maybe? Maybe not. Let's see. Let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that's nice and dark. Okay. What about here? A little bit of that here? Sure. Okay, not bad. I lost some... An unfortunate casualty, I lost, I lost my hairline. There we go. Maybe that's right. Let's come in with a lighter brush. I think I've used the big brush about as long as I can on the on the hair. So we're going to come in and let's see. We need some yellow. So I'm going to use that that bright hands of yellow that I was talking about. We're going to get some of that going here some hands uh. so now we got this thinner brush going and I, I think that's probably better at this stage in the game you can of course I was talking about trying to use that that broad those larger brushes as long as possible but of course you can do it for too long All right, so I'm just I'm just kind of going in here and trying to see where I can use some more yellows. And I'm periodically wiping my brush clean as well cuz I I want to get rid of the extra the extra blue if it comes off. Zones of yellow. Where is the yellow? Let's get back. To, is this hands of yellow? Did I make that up? This is not hands of yellow. This is Naples yellow. I'm sorry, I, I got that wrong. This is Naples yellow is what this is called. This this brighter um, 
it's almost like I don't know it's almost white I think it it's one of um, one of Gamblin's pre-mixed hues I think it has titanium white and something else um, titanium white and maybe like cadmium yellow or something possibly I don't know I could be wrong about that but I think I think so so it's something kind of similar to that that blush that I was talking about before like a a, a premix that Gamblin has which again I, I kind of like those I, I it's a bit of a shortcut I guess but when you're a wild blender like myself um, who's not that great at blending colors sometimes a pre-mix will give you some better consistency um, at least that's true for me because when I put together yellow ochre with cadmium red man who knows if I'll get the proportions right sometimes that's a, a wild time all right so I need to get in here there's definitely some some brighter white spots that I need to get some titanium white coverage on that's good that's pretty solid but it needs more and I probably need to go back to the skin as well and find some of those highlighted areas because they do exist I just didn't I didn't catch them so another thing that I've seen people do that I have had mixed success with is using a palette knife on hair which I don't think I'm gonna try here because I'm not very good at it but I have definitely seen that um, And what, oops, oh, that is really quite a strand of hair. Oof, that was not intentional. <laughs> Maybe I'll leave it in there. That's pretty wild. No, I don't think I will. That's a little too wild. That was funny. That'll happen sometimes when you're not paying attention, but... So I've got one of these palette knives and I've seen people scrape the canvas to get individual hair reflections like okay I'll even I'll try it so like see that I don't know if you can see it but it looks like a strand of hair or you could do it like that Okay, well, I already started, so I might as well. But like that. You don't do it everywhere, and you don't do it haphazardly. But like that. There's one. Maybe there's one here. And just, I think you just kind of curve it where you want one. I don't think you can do it till in like this stage though towards the end but you can add some hair effects that way as I said I'm not very good at it so I'm probably not the person to learn about that from um, but you can do it 
Uh, let's see, what else do we need to do? So we're we're at an hour and twenty minutes, which is pretty long. I I don't know if that's useful to anyone to sit for an hour and twenty minutes and just watch somebody. But let me add a couple little shadows here. Well, I don't know. I guess I'll just keep talking. It can't hurt. Perhaps it's not useful to anyone, but I'll just I'll keep rolling. So that's this could be a good stopping point for some people. Like there's the there's the basic head. Everything's there. Perhaps I didn't put the ear in the right place, but that's fine. Perhaps we'll just hide it. So, I think we'll probably stop there. I think that's a good... Oh, well, no, we can't stop there. It looks too weird. we got to keep going. So, this is kind of adjustment on the fly to some extent. This is hoping that oil paint is going to be flexible for us. Because I, I didn't really get the the angle right here. So I want to come back in and just hope that the paint will be nice to us and let us adjust. All right. I think that's probably probably fine for now. So that is sort of this live painting session walkthrough. I hope it turned out okay. I think it mostly did. Um, I talked about some of the aspects that I look at as I'm painting and um, some considerations. Uh, I hope it's been helpful. If there are any questions, definitely sound off in the comments. I'm, I'm glad to answer anything about this process. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. See you next time.